Hi, I'm Abu Bakar, and in this session, I will be sharing with you how you can secure your continuous everything strategy. The software development life cycle is rapidly evolving, with new stages added quite often. But security is just catching up. First, introductions. My name is Abakar Siddiq Ango, and I'm a developer evangelism program manager at GitLab and also a CNCF ambassador. I'm an engineer based in the Netherlands. You can, if you are learning Dutch, please let me study by this. At least I'll be able to say more than Hod <laughs> Now, software development has evolved due to the increasing requirements and complexity that is, has been thrown at software development these days. Thus, the need to increase productivity and get into market faster has led to the line between development and operations blurring into the background. DevOps allows companies to build applications, test, deploy, or release, and monitor them with the metrics or data from production environment informing decisions for bug fixes and future proposals. All this happened within the same cycle. Thus, the work never stops. But we learn from the mistakes we've made and fix them immediately. But one stage is often missing, forgotten or neglected till the end. That's security. And that's where DevSecOps comes in. Now, with DevSecOps, security is shifting to the left and made a priority at every stage. This allows bugs, vulnerabilities, and other issues to be discovered much earlier. Not just security, governance is also shifting to the left because decision makers need to be part of the process at every stage, in adding to the context and informing where, wherever the, the development is moving off the product pipeline instead of showing up just at the end of the life cycle. But with recent, with recent happenings in the world, there has been a surge in the need for a lot of services to happen online, thus putting a strain on existing DevOps strategies. Everything needs to move fast. That's where concurrent DevOps comes in. Now, take for example the comparison between regular Microsoft Word that we use offline and Google Docs. With Word, only one person can edit a document at a time and it needs to be handed off via email or sent through some messaging app to other people to work on, most often concurrently. This often leads to conflict. But with docs, lots of people can be editing the same document at the same time with version history and real-time feedback. This is what concurrent DevOps achieves. Multiple people involved in software development at every stage can be working concurrently without getting blocked by others, except, of course, when there is uh, a dependency that needs to be resolved. This way, more speed is achieved in going to market, coupled with automation, because everything has to be automated if we want to move fast and we have lots of people working at the same time. Now, the demand for software development lifecycle now requires automation. So something is wrong with my slide. Let me move to the next slide. Awesome. Something is wrong with my slide. Let me continue. Now, the demand of the software development lifecycle now evolve requires automation. After developers have built parts of the system concurrently, those parts need to be integrated, tested, deployed, and monitored. The old style will involve manually getting all these steps done, but making all the processes continuous means everything is automated. 
using CI CD tools. There are lots of them out there, including open source ones like Tekton and Jenkins X. With GitLab also making a very uh, uh, awesome uh, solution. Now, developers only need to focus on what they do best, which is creating good software. Continuous doesn't necessarily mean just continuous integration or continuous deployment or uh, delivery. It means the entire life cycle, aside from development, needs to become continuous, which leads to efficiency, speed, and increased productivity. Now, but with speed comes security challenges, with several team members pushing codes at the same time and introducing changes to the system. It's, in, it's increasingly easier to introduce vulnerabilities. Among the top vulnerabilities listed in the 2021 Top 25 Most Dangerous Software Weaknesses from the CWE list that most security tools use for analysis, privilege escalation ranks high among all of them. And this vulnerability often does not come from the code the developer has written, but from the dependency or base container image of the operating system image they are using. We use a lot of tooling and a lot of uh, dependencies. So if any of them has bugs, the whole code needs to has, will have bug. Now, listed here are common security challenges that we are usually battled with, especially nowadays, we have things like container availabilities. And uh, because we are an industry that stands on the shoulders of giants, we use dependencies very heavily. And not vet vetting them before you use them in, the soft in your software can be detrimental. Even when you are working with safe dependencies, you cannot be sure that it won't be yanked off the interface of the earth abruptly. We've seen situations like that. Another issue is license compliance. The dependency you love so much might not have, might not fit your license requirement, which often leads to legal issues if left unchecked. There has been several discussions that we've seen online lately about changes in licenses, which often doesn't go well. Bugs, privilege escalation, license compliance, and secret exposure are major challenges. Honing in on a few of those challenges, I will start with privilege escalation. This is the most exploited vulnerability as it usually happens due to a vulnerability in a software or the tooling being used or the underlying operating system images running your software. Most times, staying up to date is a remedy, but the rate at which bugs or vulnerabilities are discovered these days is way more faster than the update strategy in place in some organizations. Most organizations stay versions behind, which can be an issue, especially with bugs out there. Supply chain vulnerabilities are also a major source of privilege escalation. We've seen a lot in the news. We are only as secure as the tooling we use. Now, we've seen privilege escalation. The next thing, con Container vulnerabilities is a major concern as container technology has gone mainstream, powering most of the infrastructure running today. But bad design is a major concern. Building images of bad base images or exposing the wrong ports or mistakes that can introduce problems into our system, thus exposing our production services. Now, Secret exposure is another major concern lately. A recent research presented at the Network or uh, Network and Distributed System Security Symposium showed that despite how it's, well known, it's a well-known fact to not include secrets in repos or expose them in CI, thousands of projects on GitHub that were analyzed have secrets exposed in different forms, different type of secrets, mostly API keys or uh, secret keys of AWS and so on. Some of these projects also assume you can simply rewrite history to fix an exposure mistake. With the right tools, bad actors can dig secrets 
in Git history. To learn more about the findings and see how secret transmission is a major concern, please visit the link referenced on this slide to learn more. Now, there are lots of security checks that can be done at various stages of the development lifecycle. We have SAS, we have DAST, uh, we have fuzzy tests, especially secret detection and so on. And most of them can be automated. In particular, security tools now have the ability to automatically even remediate discovered vulnerabilities like rotating exposed AWS keys or creating a commit to correct or suggest container images uh, or suggest changes to container images and other fixes. But chief among these security features is vulnerability management, like a dashboard. You and your security team need to have a dashboard to see the vulnerabilities discovered, which were automatically fixed, which of them were automatically fixed, and which of them were fixed by the developers, and those that require the uh, attention of the security team. This way, it can help inform changes that need to be made to the system and reinforcements that need to be put in place in order to avoid such vulnerabilities. On the slide here, you can see the traditional approach to security. It's often an afterthought. The whole development life cycle goes on before an assessment is done and a ticket is created for the development team to fix. But with DevSecOps, but, with, but when your DevSecOps strategy becomes concurrent. Everyone is part of the process and everyone is involved in making sure that as soon as security vulnerabilities are discovered, they are fixed with a dashboard presented to your security team in order to be able to see what has been happening, what are the vulnerabilities that have been discovered and how, to, how they were fixed and gives them an overview of what are the main challenges happening on the system and ways to fix it. Now, shifting left is not just enough, but it requires a change in culture plus comprehensive continuous security testing. Like I said earlier, continuous is not just for integration and deployment or uh, delivery. It involves all part of the development lifecycle, including continuous security testing. That means at every stage, security checks that you need to do needs to be continuous at, for every commit that is done, for every push that is done, uh, sorry, commit that is done, they need to be checked, they need to be tested, uh, images need to be checked before they are built. And those images need to be checked, your manifest files need to be checked before they are deployed to your cluster or your uh, Terraform uh, plans need to be checked and verified before they are deployed. Now, and once you achieve margin security, shifting left uh, security as a culture within your DevOps, DevSecOps lifecycle, shifting left becomes naturally easy. Thank you very much for joining me and for you to learn more about GitLab and some of the ways you can use GitLab to uh, visit about.gitlab.com. Thank you.